Hi Sophie friends, Kendra here, and today we are going to be talking about Will It Soap, as in Will It Soap in Color. Um, this is going to be a quick short tutorial on how to determine if a botanical will survive saponification before you make any soap. So we're going to be looking at a couple of teas. I have butterfly pea flower, I have a red sandalwood decoction, and I have some infused Himalayan rhubarb, and I also have some infused alkanet. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and flip you down so that you're looking straight down um, overhead so you can see exactly what's going on. But this is going to be a quick test that will allow you to test any botanical um, before you make any soap. Alright, so give me a moment and I'll flip you down and we'll get started. Alright, so let's look at each of our botanicals here. Um, first, let me mention this is my sodium hydroxide solution. Um, it is a standard one-to-one -one solution that I soap with. All right, our first botanical is the lovely, lovely butterfly pea flowers. And this kind of inspired this portion of the lesson because about once, maybe twice a week even, I am uh, fielding a post, a question, a comment, an FAQ, will this wonderful butterfly pea flower tea make blue soap? Well, let's find out. So I have put way too much of the botanical in here. I have a very, very highly concentrated tea. You can see it's been steeping here, probably about 20 minutes. So let's find out what happens if we were to make soap with this. You'll also see the lovely blue, and this is a wonderful, wonderful tea um, to drink. It's fun, it's blue, it's bright, tastes pretty good, it's supposed to be pretty good for you. All right, so let's see, will it soap? And there's the color change from the pH of the sodium hydroxide solution. It went to a lovely brown and, or lovely green, and now it's going brown. It'll go khaki here in a moment. And it was a fun little color show here, but it will not make a blue soap. It will definitely go brown. And as we continue to stir, we're just allowing all of the <clears throat> um, botanical infusion to um, to get to that higher pH. And your soap will be this lovely khaki color. So that is what happens if you put butterfly pea flower tea into soap. Brown. Like I said, no knocking brown, but we were looking for blue, weren't we? All right, let's look at our next water-soluble colorant. This is red sandalwood. Um, this is red sandalwood from Ann George. And it is a ground, looks like sawdust because it, it is a, a wood. It's red sandalwood. Uh, definitely something you will want to strain before you put in the soap so you don't end up with sawdust in your soap. And this is a quick decoction I made. Let's see what happens when we add the sodium hydroxide solution to red sandalwood. I usually use this to paint soap. So I'll make a tincture out of it with, look at that, look at that, lovely. Um, I will put about a teaspoon of this into a shot glass and I will then add um, some isopropyl alcohol until I have, um, 
a little slurry I can paint with and paint that onto the soap. It makes for some lovely, lovely, lovely um, painted stamps. Oh, I just love this. We could probably add a smidge more. Let's see. It just has just such vibrant colorants to it. One of my favorites. Oh, I love that first change there where it gets to a purple, then to a mauve. Oh, so much fun. The magic that is science. All right, let's set this one aside. So one successful water soluble and one not so successful. The butterfly um, pea is making a lovely little orange going on here, but that definitely goes brown in the soap. All right. Next up, let's look at two of our oil soluble botanicals. This is Himalayan rhubarb from Ann George. It is a finely ground powder and it makes a rather murky looking infusion. Um, here it is in the jar infusing. It's been in there for um, oh, actually, it looks like it is two, it is one and a half months, so about eight, uh, six weeks. All right, assuming I got the date right. So this is the oil. I'm just going to pour this directly onto the plate, kind of like making soap on a plate. And I did not need to use that much. I just wanted to make sure um, we saw enough contrast and area on here. So will it soap? Let's find out what happens with Himalayan rhubarb in a high pH environment. Look at that. Oh, lovely. Look at that. Just look at that. Yes, I could have been adding drops and we don't need to add this much of the sodium hydroxide lye solution, but oh, isn't that fun? Look at it. Let's just stir this for a moment and enjoy the color change. Oh my, 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 my. Look at that. Look at that. Let's just wait a moment here. Um, with, with rhubarb, you definitely want to make sure you insulate your mold. Um, it really does need to gel in order to obtain the wonderful uh, magenta and fuchsias you can get with this magical, magical colorant. Oh, just lovely. Um, if we were to leave this set overnight, um, we would see some more of the color pop coming, but oh, just such a beautiful, beautiful color in here. Okay, you don't really need to um, emulsify <laughs> the not soap on the plate, right? Okay, we will set this one aside. And for, oh, look, did you just see it? It just did a huge color shift. Gosh, it's so fun. All right, and for our final colorant, we have Alpinet. Let me show you the botanical first. This is again from Ann George, and it is again another fine powder. Put some down, you can see it's a very, very fine powder. Very dark looking powder. When your infusion is ready, you will notice that your jar will be coated with this wonderful, deep, grape juice. I like to see, it, it reminds me very much of grape juice concentrate. That is what a nice infusion looks like. <clears throat> so what happens, let's say we didn't know, let's find out, will it soak? So we are going to lose that wonderful grape juice, burgundy, color, but 
it will be replaced with such a wonderful, wonderful purple. I'll try and spread this out a bit thin for you. And with Alkanet, you will also want to get a good gel on your soap. And we're looking right now, it's almost, it almost reminds me of blueberries right now. It's very blue, very purpley blue. Um, Alkanet is um, a pH indicator. And as this, you can already start to see the color changing here. As this sets up, we're going to go from um, the burgundy that we had and it'll start as it goes hot, the pH increases, it'll get to a blue, and then as the pH balances back down to that of handmade soap, um, right around eight, we'll have that lovely purple that we associate with, um, with the Alkanet uh, for our purple soaps. All right, so I hope that was helpful to you. We are going to move forward in this e-class to start uh, learning how to make some of these, how to actually extract the colorants out of the botanicals through macerations into our various solvents. Um, but I did want you to see how you could quickly test them to see if it is um, gonna soak for you. And I hope you had as much fun with that as I did. All right, see you in the next lesson.